I came into session one day, and he kept falling asleep. And I poked him and said, Al, you must have had a tough night last night because you're falling asleep. You better go back in the member's lounge and sleep it off, or you're going to end up on the front page of the Democrat uh, showing you're sleeping through session. So he said, no, no. He said, I woke up this morning with this terrible cold, and I took some NyQuil to take care of it. And I said, well, Al, NyQuil is what you take when you want to go to sleep at night. How much did you take? And he said, just a bottle. <laughs> I first saw him as a young, tall individual. And in my mind, I said to myself, I wonder if he's going to be a basketball player. <laughs> Al didn't play a whole lot his junior year. Al was still trying to be developed, you know. He couldn't chew gum and walk when he was first started playing basketball. But my high school coach started working with him personally, individually, when he was a, a junior. He was the most determined athlete, I think, that I ever coached. And I coached some great ones. and and and. and had some to really blossom into outstanding, not only athletes, but outstanding people. Yeah. So it was, it was a real pleasure to see him blossom day by day. Yeah. And uh, by the time we got to be a senior, Al was a super ball player. He was really good. He was the second, ball, he was the second best ball player on the team beside me. Uh, he really was good. He was right behind me, second best ball player. Oh, he, he would always try to help his teammates yeah. and, and counsel them. Yeah. Uh, he tried to counsel Mr. Lamb, but uh, I don't think that worked out too well. I was kind of shy in high school and uh, up until I got in, up until my junior year. So when I saw a girl that I wanted to say something to, I was shy to say anything to the girl because we were from Midway and most of the girls were from Havana. And I really wanted to say something to this girl, but I was just shy. I just couldn't do it. So who did I go get to go and kind of say a word for me? Al Lawson. And he wasn't, uh, sh he wasn't shy to say nothing to anybody. He just walked right up to those girls and tell them what he wanted to tell them. And when you know anything, here you are with the girl because Al going to hook you up. Some people just seem to have that knack about them, and they're just kind of there. They're not, they didn't appear to be shy. He didn't appear to be shy at all. Um, maybe if I said, you know, I was doing something, well, let's not get together. He was always persistent. And that's the kind of thing you see in leaders. You know, they, they don't accept no all the time unless they want to accept no. And so as I, as I look back, it makes me think as I look back, he didn't accept no very well from me. Al reminded me very much of uh, Governor Lawton Childs and Senator Pat Thomas in his style. Uh, he could make a speech anytime, he could debate anytime on any issue, and you had to listen to him because he was going to make a point. He's a big, tall, affable guy. Uh, sounds like he's easygoing, but he'll keep on tightening the knot until he gets to a point to where you really can't disagree with him. He has no problems going into a room where he knows nobody. He is not going to be quiet. He's going to find somebody. He's going to get a conversation. I think he was able to communicate with people that you would not expect him to be able to communicate well with. Okay, um, he, he dealt with people no matter what scale or what level they was on, uh, whether it was black or white. He had a tremendous uh, uh, skill to deal with people that uh, traditionally don't deal with black people in a way that he does. Well, he could go to the backwoods of Liberty County with some of the roughest rednecks you'll ever be around and pat them on the back and tell a joke and drink a beer with them and fit right in. And they welcomed him with open arms. I think when the heat was on and may have been a critical vote coming up that might have gone in the wrong direction for him, he would go and talk to people 
and uh, try to work it out. Uh, but he was, it seems to me he was always calm under pressure. And then when he was successful, uh, I don't ever recall his tooting his own horn. Uh, you didn't have a headline in the Democrat. You didn't uh, read about it, a uh, press release. Uh, it, just, it just happened. He never let anybody paint him into a corner ideologically or dogmatically or uh, uh, in respect to uh, party affiliation. Uh, he was a great leader uh, for the Democratic Party in the Senate just before he uh, retired from there because of term limits. But even there, he did not let anybody assume that he was going to be in a certain place just because he had a D before his name. You know, you hear the same old song and dance a lot of people say about politicians, you know, that. But I can honestly say that, that Lawson never, I, and in all the years I worked for him, did I ever feel that he was not in the right place. Um, he was always someone who, who, who worked very hard to do what was right. He felt like he had the right to make up his own mind based on what he thought was best for his constituency. And I think that really set Al apart and continues to set him apart. He's, he's been like that. Now he's out in the private sector and Al Lawson does what he thinks is right. I think what motivates him in politics is, is being able to make a difference in people's lives. Um, he has so many people that call on him that don't have anybody else apparently that they can call on that will, will take their concern somewhere else. And he believes in just trying to make life better for other people. He was late one morning for session and um, he um, had to call and tell the president, Mr. President, he's going to be late today. But what Lawson was doing that day was he had seen a, a, a young mother pushing a little baby in a, um, a uh, stroller up Tennessee Street. She was homeless. And he had approached her and asked her, you know, did she need anything? And she didn't have a place to live. And that the kind of person he is, he was late that day for session. He had found a place for her to live, and he and one of the other staff helped move her in to that apartment, and that's why he was late that day. It's, it's amazing the accomplishments that he's made for the universities, for the community college, for the counties, you know, for average citizens. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what the call is. He, he always seems to, to have time for the call, always, and he does now. He has the need to accomplish things with his life, and he tries to do that in a positive way every day. And I think that goes back to the work ethic uh, based on his community, based on coaches like Coach Ross, and, and based on his family. Uh, and then there's just something in some people that uh, is exhibited uh, in that way and Al is one of those, those people that we're fortunate to have in our society. I can, you know, say I guess the good Lord must have had a, a plan in mind when he created his big old frame uh, because he knew he needed a big heart to carry it around in. If I can help somebody along the way, there's a saying, then my living is not in vain. And I think he, he exhibited that attitude in his life. And he is most deserving. And I'm happy for him. And I love him for that.